What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. You see this box we got over here? In that box is what they call a MicroVibe 2 aircraft analyzer. And what this thing does is it, it allows us to, to, to balance props and analyze aircraft engines. The, the only problem is, is that we're not really 100% sure on the proper way to use this thing. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna figure that out. This morning, I'm headed over to the hangar to meet up with Wayne and Renee from Firewall Forward. Wayne has actually been in the prop balancing game for a few years now and has agreed to come down and spend the day teaching us what we need to know to get our system up and running. And the plan for today is to try and knock out a total of three different airplanes, starting with the MU-2 and then move on to the 802 air tractor and then finally onto the Thrush. So let's get started. So one of the first things that we need to do is get these panels off here so we can get in there and start mounting the sensors up. The next thing we need to do is remove any of the weights that had been previously installed. That'll give us a zero balance and a, a fresh start when we go to spin this thing up. And now we just gotta find a spot for the accelerometer. And one important thing to remember when you're trying to find a spot to mount the accelerometer is that you always wanna have it- Directly to the shaft, because if I put it over here, it's not directly to the shaft, because there's a flange in there, I can't move it this way. You want it always, doesn't matter if it's upside down or anywhere, just so it's against the shaft. Or... So all we're doing is just putting the phase sensor on a bracket here and then just uh, tightening it down on this housing here. And that's going to shoot an arrow right onto the backing plate right there with the red sensor or with the red light. Then we're going to take this cord okay. and we're going to connect. So I assume that there's only one way to get these right. So this one. Yes, here, there is only one, one way. way. If you look here, here I'll show you on this so one. Four pin. Yeah, but if you look where the little decant is, yep. there's one little spot there. That's okay. Yep, I see it. And the other cannon plug, you got to turn it until it drops down and then you twist on. Okay. I think we'll go underneath and over that. Just like that. Yep. I had to wear black today, so it was a little more slimming. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> See, we're thinking ahead. Now that we got the sensors installed, the only thing left to do now is run the wires down the wing and out of the way. So what we're going to do is we've got this reflective tape. you got to put it on the, on the backing plate here, but we got to put it on a, uh, a nut plate, kind of right in line with the nut plate. So that's all I'm going to do right now. That was easy. You got it. You got it. Okay, hit yeah. on. Hit on and it'll help you with... Uh... Analyzing self-test here. Okay. Go to mode, let's go to control panel, and let's go new history file. Type in Garrett. Um, how? Okay. Oh, you gotta go to, uh, go to, where am I? Prop template, I forgot that. Yeah. Okay, now type in Garrett. Okay, now go to start. Go start to start, analysis. Go to start analysis. Loading. And then go to task. Task, got okay, it. Okay, it's gonna be the first one up there and say task setup. Task setup. Yep. 
and set task name. And this is four floor AF R I T or however you want to say right. Interesting. So that's it then. Yes. Now you're ready. And like I showed you, just put this up well, there. Then? Well, actually, what I'd do. Okay. Just go done. And make sure. Okay. Start analysis. Okay. And then since it's acquiring, just go shut off. And then you can unhook, and we can haul it out. We're ready. Good deal. Remember that which way the prop turns. These are opposite. So that's when you use the red on your protractor. And here I'll show you something else about that. You look and you always see it's from okay. So with the arrow, the prop spins this way, correct? Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So if you look at the back side of it. Why don't you take a look here. We got 360, 330, 330 here. So real quick, just so we're all on the same page, what Wayne is trying to explain to me here is that there's two sides to this protractor and to make sure and always use the correct side in conjunction with the way that the prop spins, or we're gonna have issues when it comes time to installing the counterbalance weights. Now let's fire this thing up and let's get our first test rolling. So what we're looking at here is a digital readout of just how far off balance this prop really is in real time. And once Luke gets this plane up to operating speed, we'll then get a good readout of where and how much weight will be needed to get this thing balanced out. And now that we got this thing up to speed, we can start the test and grab those numbers. Now that the test is complete, it looks like we need about 23, maybe 24 grams of weight at 0.8 degrees. So what we do then is just bust out the scale, start weighing up some weights, try to get the amount of weight as close as we possibly can to what the system is looking for, and then just put that amount into the system. Then what it does is it spits back a predicted variation, and if you look, it's pretty close to what we're looking for, so we're going to roll with that and just see how it goes. What we'll do now is go ahead and fire this thing back up, let it run for a little bit, get it up to speed, and then run the numbers again and see how we look. If we look good, we just bounce to the other side and then move on. And I know it's a little hard to see because the screen is very dark, but everything looked good. Everything looked very dialed in and very balanced. So what we did is we just repeated the process on the other side, and now we're just gonna wrap everything up and move on to the next airplane. Right next door sits the 802 air tractor, and to be honest with you, the whole process of balancing this prop was very similar to how we went about doing the MU-2. All we had to do was find a spot to mount the sensors, run the cables both down the cowling and the wing, fire this thing up, and see what kind of readings we got once we had this thing ripping. Once we got this thing up to speed, we noticed that the prop really didn't need much of an adjustment at all. It was pretty well dialed in. So what we ended up doing is just kind of shutting her down, packing it up, and then moving on to the thrush. And again, with the thrush, it was the same process as we had done with the previous two aircrafts. All we had to do was find a spot to mount the sensors, then we ran the cables down the cowling and secured them into place started the aircraft and got the engine up to operating speed and then proceeded to take our first reading to kind of see what our starting point was.
and I'll try to get the camera to where you guys can see it, but it looks like it's off about 35 grams on the 287 radial. So now we just gotta start weighing up some bolts and washers and see if we can't get this thing a little bit closer to balance. Now, let's see the weight of this screw was 2.9. So 35.3 minus 2.9 equals. Okay, just to be sure. Just go 35.3 minus 2.9 equals 32.4. Okay, so that's what we're implementing right here. 32.4, even though this is 35.3 because I took that weight out. You understand? Yep, gotcha. Okay, enter changes. So we're going to put 32.4. at 280 degrees. Okay. Okay, let's go put this, let's take this with to double check. So 360 degrees is your mark, which is here. Okay. Right here, right here in yep. the center. So then we would just basically take this and yep. put it on 360, just like that. And you that. know that each one of these is 20 degrees now. Yep. So this is, go ahead. 340, 320, 300, 280, 280. Yep. just like that. And you've got the right side on. You've got this one because the prop does turn that way. Yep. I don't know, what were you indicating for RPM? Like 100%. Were you? Yeah, okay. a little over. This one's showing a little bit under, so. Is it? Yeah. So it might be your gauge. I don't know how old your gauge is or if it's been. No idea. No idea. But you know, just like the, you can run at 97% too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, don't let that I'm pop I'm going to talk to this guy. He wants me to... Oh, okay. I think, okay. I think he wants... You? Ask me a question. After I'd gotten back from helping that customer, they had already done final spin on that prop just to make sure everything was balanced properly. And then they brought the plane back in the hangar for final installation of the counterbalance weights. Now this one was already drilled. So, I like the other one the same. If I go to an inch, then the other one will be the same. All right. If you remember, there were 340, 320, 300. 300 would be the center one. So, okay. Okay. See, and that's where you have a grip length, Jeremy, because look at the thickness of these plates. Okay? Pretty thick. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Looks good. Okay, where's Didn't you just put a washer on the inside and one on the outside? Yep. Even? Yep. Yeah, that wouldn't matter. If you're going to hit something, just make sure everything's inside. I like doing it that way. Yeah. That's what See, I, I had to try to keep it as even as possible. Even as possible, yeah. Put the old nose cone back away, we'll the Trick here is to look for these dots. And then we're going to line it up with the, the dots on the spinner so we have it in the same spot. Alright, so that one actually went pretty good. We didn't have any issues on this one. We just kind of pulled it out, you know, had everything all hooked up. We ran it up, you know, checked the machine, did some calculations to kind of see where the weights needed to go. Installed the weights, ran it back up, and everything just kind of just kind of dialed right into place and it was it was it was pretty nice. So then we just brought it back inside here and put everything back together and I think uh, I think we're good to go. I think that's where we're gonna call it on this one. And again, I want to give a big thanks to Wayne and Renee for coming down and spending the day with us. You guys were a huge help today, and thanks again. And until next time, we'll see you.